In 2022, young people in Batley and Leeds worked with storytellers and researchers from York St John University, exploring true stories of climate adaptation from around the world. The young people used what they learned to create short stories that could pack into suitcases and which communicated how people are already experiencing the effects of climate change and what we can learn from this. This short film takes you on the journey of our project. We're going on a journey to Batley. Let's take a trip to the Arctic. We're going on a journey to Brazil. We're going on a journey to Malawi. We're going on a trip to Ukraine. We're going on a journey to Australia. Let's take a journey to Japan. Um, how is climate change affecting you guys in Brazil? Um, do you guys experience natural disasters like tornadoes and hurricanes, stuff like that? Um, so due to the climate change, the weather has been changing very, like, very often. So like maybe next month it might be cold. We don't know. But for now, it's very hot. That's... Due to the increase in temperature, because the weather has changed from cold to hot, cold-blooded animals are started to come out more, like scorpions and snakes. I feel like people should be more respectful of what's happening in other countries just because you're not affected by it doesn't mean they're not either. Climate change at the moment, um, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of technology, there's a lot of learning going on, but often part of the gap, if I'll say so, is the uh, difficulty in exchange of knowledge between different groups, especially between the global north and the global south. And the interesting thing with the suitcase stories is that it's bringing youths together to learn from each other. I'm about to tell you a story about a boy who changed the life of Australian people. Um, adaptation is when a, like a place changes in like something. So for this, um, countries are like changing in temperature because the climate is getting hot. So people are having to like change like the way they like live and like how animals live, um, just to like better suit that new environment. It is hard to adapt to different things, you know. No matter how big or how small the like the change is, it's going to be hard to adapt in some way. But we've all got to learn to adapt because otherwise, there's no hope for our planet anymore. Once there was a girl named Kaya. She belonged to an Amazonian tribe. One day, she went to take a walk to pray at the sacred tree. To her shock, she found that the tree had been cut down. We're going on a journey to Brazil. We think that climate change is crucial. We think it is a major priority that needs to be addressed in education. We want to look at citizenship, global education, uh, humanities education, um, and we think that it is something that should be a compulsory part of education for all secondary school students. May knew she had to do something about this. And so with her community, they organised a protest to help raise awareness of the environmental issues that were, um, that were occurring in her local neighbourhood. So they're able to exchange knowledge. So it's not a one-way learning, it's a sort of a uh, both-way learning. So there are things the students in Nigeria will be able to share with uh, those in the UK, and they can learn better how to cope uh, with the impact of climate change and adapt better to the impact of climate change. Um, so this project helps me learn about um, other people like who live very different lives. I also like learning about how multiple like um, people are trying to adapt. My name is William and I grew up as an Inuit living in the Arctic with my family. But one day I got a job offer at the age of 19 to live in the United States as a detective. We're going on a journey to Batley. Scarred and hurt, James carried that day with him. The only things he had left to remind him of his sister were her old baby shoes and a pine cone 
from the old tree in front of their house. The students have enjoyed looking at something that is a very important and serious issue, but in a creative and thinking outside of the box way. The idea that they've got a visual like the suitcases and they've taken ownership, they've really bought into it because it's not just, oh, here is a topic, here's something that's current affairs, here's global education, here that we've got climate education. But actually what we've also got is we've got a creative approach. Um, and I just think it's lovely to see them working, to do research. They've taken ownership, it is their project, and it will go in an organic way and it will just flow. And that's what I think has been missing in education over the last couple of years. So not only is the topic important, I think because that is just not up for negotiation, but the way that it's, we've approached it as a whole team has been absolutely enjoyable to be involved in. The skills that we've learned are like how to tell a story and like how to tell a story in a big audience and not to be like shy or anything. The entirety of storytelling just brings much more than just information can. It really like draws you in with those emotions and really makes you feel what that person feels, which sort of makes you understand it better. So I think just the stories on the whole of these people, the these things that they've been through. Just... Everything was going to plan. And Amaya and her great-grandmother sat upon a hill and watched how everything had come to a really good end. Let's take a trip to the Arctic. I think the students have got a lot out of this project. I will be very honest, it's been very challenging in education and so when it was first broached I did have misgivings about whether we had capacity to deal with this within schools, whether the students would want to buy into it, um, whether the students had got out of the habit of stopping behind to be involved in these sort of extracurricular wider projects but actually I've been blown away by their response. The amount of students that wanted to be involved, that returned their forms, whose parents were on board with it, it's just been absolutely astounding. <laughs> Uh, I like all the games and like all the exercises we can do um, and and like all the different activities we're doing as like a group. I like the elements of storytelling and being able to like talk about the different like things that are happening to like our world like right now and how they're affecting us. I like hearing all of the different people's stories. So like the people that have been affected by climate change the most. Storytelling is a powerful and also an empowering way for young people to make sense of complex issues. Young people on this project have met remotely with a climate journalist from the Mothers of Invention Climate Justice podcast and heard from her true stories of how people, mostly women around the world on the climate front lines, are helping their communities build resilience to climate change. But also, when we provide young people with the tools to become storytellers, we don't only help them understand the issues themselves, we also help them pass that knowledge on to others, share it with other people. And in fact, young people involved in this project have gone on to perform their suitcase stories at community events in their own areas. From the, from the project, I feel like I've really worked on actually working my, on my leadership skills. So, um, you know, by enabling myself to think of this issue in Australia and influencing that on students younger than me and actually yeah. being able to work with students younger than me um, was really inspiring. Um, I think I've learned um, I mean, how to kind of like pick up on issues um, and like how they can be solved to kind of like uh, looking a bit more into kind of like what can be done and the people around it so so say I now I'd look more into kind of like what can be done instead of more of uh, what, what can be done and how can we solve it and instead of more of um, a kind of like um, being upset about it so th this has been a fantastic project to be part of and, and to be honest we're always looking at, as a school to get involved in projects like this because Ultimately, you go back to what the ethos of the school is and what our aspirations for our young people are. So not only do we want young people who achieve um, great results and outcomes because that's their passport to the next stage of their life, but we want them to be great citizens as well and ambassadors for our community. So um, 
enabling and empowering young people to be able to discuss and um, articulate their kind of thoughts and potential solutions about what are incredibly complex um, problems and challenges that we face is central to what education is and should be about. Thank you so Thank much you. for listening. Thank you so much for listening.